Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that the following program contains images and voices of people who have died. Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. The Easter break is finally here. Ren checked out what it's all about. Oh, hey! Have you seen someone tallish, hairy, long ears? I, I think he dropped these. Yep, it's that time of year again. Easter. While that might make you think about chocolate and bunnies and chocolate bunnies, there's actually a lot more to it than that. For Christians, Easter is one of the most important holidays of the year. It's a time when families get together and go to church. Good Friday represents the day Jesus Christ died on the cross, which is why you see a lot of hot cross buns around this time of year. And Easter Sunday is a celebration of the day Jesus rose from the dead. Now you may be wondering, how does the Easter Bunny fit into the picture? Well, many reckon the Easter Bunny came from a pagan festival called Eorspida, which celebrated the arrival of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, a time of hope and new life. And because rabbits breed so easily, they too became a symbol for new life, which is how the whole egg thing comes into it too. Ah, I, I see, but why are the Easter Bunny's eggs chocolate? <laughs> I'm not complaining, just curious. Yeah, there's no real symbolism there. I think it's just because chocolate tastes good. Works for me. <laughs> hey, you ate my chocolate. This year's Splendour in the Grass Music Festival has been cancelled. It's the latest big Aussie music festival to call it quits, leaving many musicians and fans pretty worried about the future of the live music industry. Experts say the cost of living crisis is making it harder to run events like these. This week is the last week of Women's History Month, where we've been having a look at some influential Australian women throughout history. Today, rookie reporter Ela is going to tell us about former nurse and Indigenous rights activist Dr Loicha O'Donoghue. Check it out. Louisa O'Donoghue was born in August 1932, but for many years she didn't know that was her name. She was one of six children born in the APY lands in South Australia. Her mother Lily was a young Kinjajara and Pitinjajara, but when Louisa was two she was taken from her family like many other Indigenous children. At the time the government thought it would be better for Indigenous kids to be raised by non-Indigenous people. Louisa was sent to live at Colbrook home in Corn, where she couldn't speak her mother's language or practice her culture, and she was given the name Lois. I didn't know her, of course, for uh, 30 years, and uh, she told me at that time, your name, Loija. Louisa was determined to get an education and make a difference in her community, so she trained to become a nurse. The witch was passionate about helping all Indigenous people get access to the health care. She started working for organisations dedicated to First Nations rights and reconciliation. We are not talking about easy words or quick fixes. Over the years, Dr Luicha O'Donoghue was given many honours and awards for her work, like Australian of the Year, the Order of Australia and the Order of the British Empire. Yeah, I feel proud, not on my own behalf, but I think for the sake of Aboriginal people. When Louisa died earlier this year at the age of 91, she was given a state funeral, helping to make sure that the name her mother gave her all those years ago will never be forgotten. Now to send us into the Easter long weekend, I thought we'd check out how some people and animals are already celebrating. Oh, oh. where did that egg come from? First up to Chile, where animals at this zoo are being treated to a fine selection of Easter eggs. But of course, you can't just give a lion or an orangutan chocolate, so uh, all of these eggs are custom filled with various other snacks a bit more suitable for them, whether it be meat, grains or peanuts. Now to Croatia, where these monolithic eggs are being decorated. It took these artists seven days to paint them all, making sure they seamlessly blend together each artwork as it wraps around the entire shell. And finally, brown bears at a zoo in Germany are tucking into even more eggs. Yes, it's all very egg-citing. With shells made out of flour and water, it's no problem they're also snacking on the shelves. I don't think that'll give anyone a tummy ache, right? Well, that's all from us this week. Enjoy the long weekend and we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.